And so it's a huge honor to have Clay Guida on the program. Let's not waste any more time and bring in Mr. Clay Guida to say hello. Hello, Clay. How are you? Sorry we're a little late to you. We're having some technical difficulties here. You know how it is. It's all good, Ariel. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, hope you don't mind the stage that I'm sitting on over here before I head off to the airport, man. You, Vegas. Where are you? What is this? Uh, I'm at the hotel. That- downtown grand hotel on fremont street and we're just a little uh, <laughs> breakfast bar called yeah the freedom beat so i have a little crowd of people that are eating, <laughs> eating <laughs> breakfast i crowd. love it Hope you guys- uh, we don't mind it at all i love it how do you f- i mean clay you have seen it all you have done it all you have fought them all and i know it's fresh and i know it's just less than 48 hours removed from what you did on saturday is it even possible to rank where that one, where that win stands for you in terms of your memorable moments inside the UFC, considering the opponent, considering how the first round went, I would imagine that's pretty damn high, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got to say, 15 years later, uh, since our UFC debut in 2006, submitting Justin James and getting the uh, submission of the night for 20000 and then getting the tap out, uh, glass trophy that they used to uh, give out. So 15 years later, submitting a multiple a time world champion Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, black belt. If I were to make a choke, it's even more special. I know, you know it wasn't his best performance. Obviously, it definitely wasn't mine, but he was definitely one of the most skilled or had the most accolades as far as any jiu-jitsu player that I fought. And he had a really, really good record, too. So uh, it, it's up there. How did you feel at the end of the first round? Were you seriously hurt? He kicked me right in the gut. It was pinpoint. And uh, so I, I don't really watch my fights right away afterwards, but my, one of my buddies showed me a highlight and it kind of looked, people thought I got, you know, kicked in the midsection. And when I brought my hands down, it looked like I was kind of uh, holding it, but he got me right in the stomach or belly button. And it was, it was brutal. I was almost like paralyzing it for 20 or 30 seconds. And I had uh, flashbacks of the, the old Diego Sanchez fight. And I was like, nah. Not again, you know, like this is not happening now. My mouth guard came out and then my silly hair ties started coming out and he was kneeing me in the head and the shoulders punching me. And we just, I had to stay calm in there and just realize if we can get through it against Diego Sanchez, uh, we can get through it against him and just grab onto anything. And we, yeah, we weathered the storm and yeah, got, uh, got back in there and pressed the tight. Yeah, press the pace. Of course, you prepare for everything you want, anything to happen. You want to win at all costs. But I would imagine, like, if you could be honest, I- I'm assuming you weren't expecting a submission. I mean, like I said, plus 1,600, that probably wasn't at the top of the list of possible finishing scenarios, right? Correct. Yeah, not at all. Um, I was expecting him to go for a choke. Once he had me, you know, hurt there, I was expecting the hands to come in for the front choke or a guillotine because... You know, people have seen some of our losses in the cage, unfortunately. Then two guillotine. And, um, yeah. Uh, not to say I wouldn't expect a submission against a, a jiu-jitsu master like him, but uh, maybe not in the second round. So, um, yeah, he had me, uh, he kicked me blue right in the gut, and I expected that in the second round, too, once he switched stances again. So we were just kind of very aware of it. And we, yeah, we just uh, stayed on the gas pedal. And what's amazing about this is uh, this is literally days before your 40th birthday. Honestly, when you made your debut in the UFC, those 15 or so years ago, like, did you really think you would last this long? Was this a part of the plan? Were you one of those guys who said, I'm going to make it to my 40s, I'm going to be thriving? Not just fighting, period, fighting in the UFC, and not just one of those guys who like, oh, they're keeping around. You're winning. You're winning in impressive fashion. Are you surprising yourself at this age? Um, I would I, I would say I'm surprising myself at this age, and I've never been one of those to, to kind of make plans or put an age limit um, or a sight limit or whatever on uh, my career because I feel like sometimes when people put maybe a number on it, you know, maybe they don't uh, maybe they don't exceed that number or whatever, they don't you know, get to it. So as long as I'm having fun, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. You know, you know, glad about our performances. It was definitely an ugly one, but. Uh, I'm just enjoying it. I'm, but yeah, I'll be 40 in a couple of days, and I feel like I'm going on 20. I, feel, I literally feel like a 21-year-old wrecking machine. I tell my uh, my coaches, they see it. And, um, yeah, 
the, the best is yet to come. I'm in way better shape now physically than when I was 25. If you look at some of the photos um, when I got in the UFC, still learning, like uh, you know, strength and conditioning things from different coaches, and now we have that, you know, locked performance in Sacramento. We have amazing coaching staff, as you guys know, with you know, obviously the general Uriah Faber, Joey uh, Rodriguez, and uh, you know, boxing. Danny Castillo, one of our head coaches, wrestling coach, uh, Chris Holdsworth, Mike Malat. I mean, the list goes on and on, not to mention all the amazing teammates every day. So, yeah, I would, I'm not surprised because we're wrestlers and we're built to last. What do you think has been the secret to your longevity? Was it getting in better shape? Was it eating better? I mean, not a lot of guys last this long in the UFC. What's been the, the secret to your success to sticking around this long? Uh, yeah, just every uh, camp, enjoying the process of training with great, uh, yeah, great trainers, great people, awesome team. You, wanna, you guys know I do a lot of fishing, so that's been kind of like, yeah, therapeutic. It's my getaway after training hard all week. Being in Sacramento, there's amazing bass fishing, you know, just up the road. Uh, we do surgeon fishing. We go out my fishing bag service. Girls, girls, girls that we take clients out all over. So I feel like, yeah, it's kind of like, that's my reward. That's my getaway. And, uh, Excuse me. We recover better now than we used to. We make sure we take care of our body. Baby. Back when I first started in the UFC, I didn't have the financials to do the uh, the cryo freeze therapy, the massages, the chiropractic, and all those things. That as you become a uh, more well-rounded professional, you know those things become more available to you. So it's just being smart. And I run every day. I wrestle all the time. And our coaches keep a very very good eye on us, and they know how we're trained. They don't let us go too crazy. And uh, yeah, we just we stay in the gas pedal. Uh, would it be fair to say, in a perfect world, the guy you want, if it was up to you, would be Nathan Diaz? Funny you bring that up. And that's very, very fair to say. Um, I doubt Nate's going to get this. He's probably going to laugh at it if he does. But uh, absolutely. Um, I, everyone knows that was a very, very good uh, one either way. It was a split decision. We wrestled, we boxed. Um, I did Neil Full Nelson. I spiked him. He kicked me, punched me. It was an awesome fight. It was 10 or 11 years ago. And uh, the Diaz brothers are some of the most exciting fighters to watch. They always have been. And uh, I feel like we're kind of at that point in our One rematch, super match. And, you know, I'm up to 170 and fight him. I know he's, you know, one, you know, six foot, six one. He's big or bigger than Neil Santos, but. I'll stand in there and box with him. We'll trade. Maybe I'll wrestle. Maybe I won't. Maybe we'll box. But do some really the best things. Slid Nate Diaz, who's at long range and um, volume. We'll kick his legs out. We'll do. Uh, we'll put on a great fight. So, oh, Nate, hope you get this, buddy. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a second chance if you want it. Oh, that would be something. Uh, and I feel like he would actually be. A lot more interested in that than uh, than you may think. We'll see what happens with his situation. Uh, I promised you, Clay, that I'd let you go by 10.20, so I'm a man of my word. I know you have a plane to catch. I really hope that uh, you have a safe travel. A happy birthday, my friend. Uh, it has been too long, so I appreciate it, my friend, and uh, I wish you all the best, and hopefully we can have you on very soon. Thank you so much, Ariel. I appreciate you guys having me on to kick off the show. I really appreciate all the support. And I can't wait to get back out there. It's 2022. I want to just yeah, stay super active. And uh, hopefully we'll be on the show guys show again soon. And if you guys know any uh, hair, hair guys out there, all boss, I, I saw yeah, I saw a couple pictures of the fight. And uh, might, might even look into uh, a little hair plug. If you want oh, to, so. Not shave it off? You want, you want to keep it long, but uh, maybe get a little uh, extensions. <laughs> wow. Something like that. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank good luck so with that. that. I appreciate it. All right. Much All right, love. There he is, the carpenter, the legend, Clay Guida.